Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag. We are already halfway through 2021, which is kind of wild. And as we like to do in booktube tradition, it is time to look back on the first six months of the year and talk about some highs, some lows, some surprises, some disappointments. This is one of a handful of tags that I like doing every year. And so we are going to dive right in. This tag was originally created many years ago, I want to say in like 2012 or 2013, which is wild. I will link the two original creators down below if you want to check them out as well. One thing I'm going to let you know up front is for most of these questions, I'm going to have like two answers. I've read so many books this year that limiting myself to one per answer just felt kind of impossible. So bear with me. Question one, best book you've read so far in 2021? Oh my gosh. Do you know how hard this is to narrow down? And then the question is like, do you mean the book that you think is the absolute best, the book that you loved the most? I don't know. I went with two answers, both of which I think are qualitatively amazing. And also I had an amazing experience with them. The first one is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. This was also my first time reading anything by Audre Lorde, and I don't know what took me so long. I, I mean, you can see I kind of like tabbed the hell out of this book. It took me almost an entire month to read because I really read it a little bit at a time and processed it, and I got so much out of this. I highly recommend it to everyone. Audre Lorde was a queer, black, feminist, activist, poet, writer, and Sister Outsider is a collection of her essays, including some pretty foundational texts for more recent work in feminism and black feminism. I'm so glad that I read this. I got a lot out of it. I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend. And then the other best book that I've read so far in 2021 is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. <sighs> Oh my gosh, this was such an emotional read for me. I really loved it. It's very slow paced and introspective, thinking about how we assign meaning to life and what really matters when you come to the end of your life. It's following an English butler who is coming to the end of his career and the world around him is changing and he goes on kind of a trip into the countryside and is reflecting on the life he's lived and, you know, the love that he let go and I just I loved it a lot. I thought it was really beautiful. The writing was stunning. It's not very long. I read this for a video where I read my friend Mara from Books Like Woe's favorite books of the ones that I hadn't yet read because we tend to have a lot of crossover in all-time favorites and um, this is one of the books I read for that and I adored it too. One of my favorite books I've read so far this year. Question two, what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021? Again, deciding was so hard, but I narrowed it down to two. One of my favorite sequels this year was A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. This is the sequel to Memory Called Empire, and I loved it. I thought it was even better than the first book. The pacing issues that I had with book one were not an issue for me in book two, and it went from single POV to multiple POV. This is exactly the kind of epic, politically driven science fiction that I love with great characters and interesting ideas. It was thought provoking. The, I definitely love this. One of my favorite sequels. My other favorite sequel is also one of my answers to a later question, which is what were your biggest surprises of the year? So I'm just going to tell you now. It is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. I loved this and resonated so deeply with what Sarah J. Mass is doing in this book. I have a reading vlog about it. I have a discussion video about it. I did a podcast episode talking about this book because there were just so many things that I wanted to unpack and things that meant a lot to me personally. And the reason it was such a surprise is that while I generally enjoy her writing, like I, I know she is not everybody's cup of tea, fair, just even in terms of writing style alone, but I have read all of her books. I generally enjoy them, have a good time with them. The Akatar series was never my favorite of hers. I preferred some of her other books. And so I wanted to read this because I knew it was coming out. People were excited about it. I thought I would have a reasonably good time with it. And then I ended up loving it and being so moved by it and the way that she explores trauma and healing from trauma and the different types of trauma that women experience. I've talked about this book 
a lot already, so I'm not going to go into it too much more here, but um, I adored this. It meant a whole lot to me and definitely one of the best sequels that I've read and one that I didn't expect to love as much as I did. And for anybody who's wondering, I am aware there have been some controversial conversations surrounding her as an author recently, and I don't think this is the right place to get into it, but my friend Jess, who does the community videos, did a pretty good job of discussing it with some level of nuance, and I would just say this is a whole other conversation that could be had, and I can't fully address it here, but because I feel like people are probably going to ask, I just want to say I am aware of those conversations. I will link Jess's video either up above or in the video description down below if you want to hear more and get some context and make your own decisions about whether or not you want to read from Sarah J Mass. One thing I will say is that some things that I see are from quite a while ago and it is worth noting that Sarah J Mass was a teenager when she wrote Throne of Glass which was her first book and you know we grow and evolve as people and yeah anyway it's a complicated topic and a sensitive one so I'm not going to get into it here but um this book meant a lot to me. Question three, what is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to? I mean, let's be real, there are many, but I am limiting myself to two. So here are two that have recently come on my TBR that I'm really excited to read. The first is Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. I've now read a couple of things by Rivers Solomon and they have just such intense, beautiful, thoughtful, thought-provoking writing. And this is gothic horror, which I'm very interested in. It follows a pregnant woman who flees into the woods and there are monsters. And I don't know all of the details, but it just sounds really interesting. The cover is beautiful. And I know River Solomon writes really interesting and beautiful things. So I want to read this. And then for another book with a gorgeous cover that I purchased, this is Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okunboa. And I believe this is his debut novel. It's the first in a new epic fantasy series that has politics and magic and betrayal. And I have heard good things about it. So I really want to read it. So there you go. Two new releases I haven't read yet, but I want to. The next question is, what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? This is another question that's really difficult to answer. I'm not sure that these are my top two, but I'm going to give you a couple that are on my radar that I'm really looking forward to. One is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. This is a YA horror novel with like small town secrets that looks really interesting. Another is Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia. Via Moreno Garcia. I'm always excited when she has a new book coming out and this one I think is another like noir crime book rather than a fantasy but look at the cover it's gorgeous clearly I'm gonna read it I I love her work okay this is this is where I'm gonna give you several <laughs> answers basically I'm also really excited for The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoretta Cordova. This is her first adult novel under Zoretta Cordova. She's written adult romance, like steamy romance under a pen name, but this is the first time she's writing like a fictional novel. And this I think is, um, this one is Latinx inspired. Um, I think it has some historical elements plus magical realism and a lot of family stuff. I don't know a ton about it, but again, gorgeous cover, an author who consistently writes really great books, and I'm excited to see what she does with it. And then the last one I'll mention here is Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. So this is a YA debut that is, get this, an Ethiopian inspired fantasy retelling of Jane Eyre. I mean, I love Jane Eyre, everything about this looks incredible. So I'm really excited to check it out. So there are some of my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I definitely give you more than two answers for that. Question five is what was your biggest disappointment of the year so far? Again, I have two that I want to mention. One of my biggest disappointments was Phoenix Flame by Sarah Holland. I really liked the first book in this duology. It wasn't a perfect book, but it had a lot going for it. I loved the world. I loved the writing. There were a lot of interesting things that happened. And the second book in the duology released early this year, and I'm not sure what happened if 
like there was a limited time on it and it wasn't able to get finished because it feels like a skeleton of a book. There's so many plot holes, it's really underdeveloped. It just needed so much more and it's very short. So it was disappointing because I was like, you had so much going for it. And you know, this may not be the fault of the author. We were coming out of COVID. It's possible that like things just didn't come together the way that they were supposed to, but that was definitely a disappointment for me. And then another disappointment was The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. We read this for the Blades and Bodice Harpers book club and like on paper, I should have loved this book. It's a gothic romance. I love gothic romance. It has a cinnamon roll hero. I love cinnamon roll heroes. Um, you know, it's got a widow, so a slightly older heroine, like all things that I like but this book just did not work for me. We have a whole live show discussing it. I have a review on Goodreads so I'm not going to go into details here but this was a book where I was like on paper this has all things that I love. Unfortunately it did not come together in a way that worked for me so that was unfortunate. Next question is what was your biggest surprise? I already mentioned A Court of Silver Flames. That was definitely a surprise. But the other book that was a big surprise for me was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I didn't expect to love this as much as I did. I feel like this is a really underhyped, underappreciated classic. Um, and, and it's unfortunate because it's so good. The characters are fantastic. There's so much emotional work in the character arcs that gets done. It tackles big issues that I think are really pretty relevant still today. It deals with things like what it was like for a woman to be in an emotionally abusive marriage. Um, it deals with issues of addiction. It's there, There's a lot in here that I wouldn't have expected to come out of a book written in the 1800s and I think more people should read it. it it's, it's great. Question seven is a favorite new author. This could either be a debut author or a new to you author. So I'm going to give you two of each. Let's start with two of my favorite debut authors from 2021. First we have Everina Maxwell who wrote Winter's Orbit. I've gushed about this a lot on this platform. It's a queer sci-fi romance with a political arranged marriage and a mystery and I adored it. This like I just ate this up. I think it's a really great debut. And then for a YA debut that I adored, this is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamide. I thought this was so interesting and so good. It's been pitched as Gossip Girl meets Get Out, which is exactly what it is. It's definitely got that like melodramatic over the top feeling, but it's dealing with really real issues. It's dealing with racism. It's dealing with homophobia. Um, I loved the characters. I loved the vibes and the twists and the turns of the mystery. I thought this was fantastic and um, I'm glad that so many people are talking about it. Two authors that I've read from this year who are new to me, but I really love them and want to read more from them are Audre Lorde. I talked about Sister Outsider earlier, but I would like to read more from Audre Lorde. I thought this was just so brilliant and thought-provoking. And also Angela Carter. I read The Bloody Chamber this year. It is a collection of short stories that are kind of subversive dark feminist retellings of fairy tales for the most part and I loved it so much. It was so interesting and so smart and it definitely makes me want to read more from Angela Carter as well. Question eight. Newest fictional crush. I'm gonna be honest I don't really do fictional crushes in the way that I think some of the people who do this tag do, but I did come up with a couple of answers for you. My first answer is Ethan from The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. I loved Ethan as a character. He's such a sweet cinnamon roll who's really caring and thoughtful and self-aware. He is a Jewish rabbi and this book is so great. It's a modern romance between this Jewish rabbi and a woman who's a former adult entertainer and now a sex educator and he invites her to do a series on modern love for his synagogue. This was just lovely. I really enjoyed the romance, but I loved Ethan. The sweetness, the cinnamon rollness, the self-awareness, all great. My second answer for this is Fatima from A Dead Jin in Cairo and Master of Jin by P. Jelly Clark. She's fantastic. She's always incredibly well dressed in these gorgeous bespoke suits that get described on page. She's also smart and ambitious and solves crimes with supernatural stuff so I feel like she's also a very good choice for a fictional crush. Question nine is newest favorite character. Again I have two for you. First up is Luke from the book Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. I loved this book. I thought it was hilarious. It made me laugh out loud. It's an own voices, male male romance. It's a romantic comedy and Luke is our <laughs> hot 
hot mess of a main character. I mean, he is a disaster, but I love him so much. I'm like, oh, you are such a mess, but I just love you and want to take care of you. Um, so he was definitely one of my favorite characters I read this year. Another recent favorite is Kate from The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. She's got big sister vibes. She's trying to protect her little sister from this rake who's trying to marry her. She's smart and pushes back. And I just really enjoyed her a lot as a character. I thought she was great. Next is a book that made you cry. I should say up front, I rarely cry while reading books. In fact, I think there's only been like three books that I've really cried in this year, one of which I can't tell you about. Um, but the other two are answers to this question. A Court of Silver Flames legitimately made me cry. Yep, that made me cry. And the other one is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, another book that I absolutely loved and adored. This is a retelling of the life of Ariadne from Greek mythology, but centering the women in the story rather than the men. Ugh, it's so good, but also so heartbreaking, and I definitely cried at the end. So two books that made me cry this year. Question 11 is a book that made you happy. Honestly, it's kind of sad how hard it was to decide on an answer to this question. I mean, there's a lot of books that make me happy in that I enjoy reading them, or maybe they make me laugh. Um, but something where I just feel really good and really happy while reading it the whole time, like there aren't that many, but I have one. There's a couple that I've already mentioned in this video that I'm not going to talk about again, but I, I, I have a good one for you. And that is Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden. It's a little contemporary romance novella that is super cute and soft and happy. It involves a meet cute at a romance bookstore. I just thought this was adorable. I picked it up when I needed something happy and fluffy in my life, and this definitely fit the bill. So go check it out. She's a wonderful black indie romance author. Question 12, the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year? I have two answers and you've already seen both of them in this video. My first answer for this is this edition of The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. It is from the UK. Actually, fun story, both of the books I'm going to talk about I ordered from the UK because I thought they were so pretty. Um, so this is one of them. And uh, it's also got gorgeous end papers that will mean something if you've read The Eponymous Bloody Chamber. I just love this edition a whole lot. And the other beautiful UK copy I have is Ariadne. Like, is this not just gorgeous? I, I love it so much. And the spine, beautiful. We're about to run out of battery, so let's change that. All right, we are back. Question 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I mean, let's be honest, there are many of them. Ideally, I would like to catch up on all of my neck alley arcs. Um, I would like to finish all of the challenges I set for myself. I'm not going to go through what all of those books are, but there are a lot of books that I would like to read by the end of the year. But you know what? If I don't get to everything I hope to get to, so be it. I do the best I can. One other thing I will mention here because some of you guys might be curious. If you want to know how many books I have read so far this year, I will tell you. It's a lot. Uh, so far I've read 192 books, which is so much. I feel like I'm gonna be reading more this year than I even read last year. Last year I think I read like 365 books. I went from like 300 one year, 365 the next year, now I'm on track to like, I don't know, am I going to hit 400? Maybe, maybe that's, which is, it's, it's wild. It, it feels like, I feel like part of it is because I agreed to judge the Vivians. And so that's been an additional 20 books that I've read that I wouldn't have. But even, I mean, even without that, I've read a lot. I'm, I'm reading a lot. Um, okay. Two more questions. Question 14 is what is your favorite video or post that you've done so far for this year? So I'm going to give you both. I'm going to give you my favorite video I've done so far and my favorite post I've done so far since I have one. I think so far my favorite video that I did this year was this one. It was a project where for two months I copied popular booktube video ideas. I, not the content was my own, but I kind of like copied the idea and the titles and maybe sometimes the thumbnails and 
and then vlogged to see how they did if it affected anything in the algorithm. I don't know that I learned much from it but it was fun and it was interesting and I'm pretty proud of how it came together so that's probably my favorite video I've done so far this year. My favorite post is a TikTok that I did that I'm very proud of. It was a lot of fun. I've been on um, I've been doing TikTok videos and the creativity there has been a lot of fun and one thing I did is a bookish version of this like outfit challenge video. I will play it here for you but I can't play the actual music that goes with it because copyright violations and the music does add something. So if you want to see the original you can follow me on TikTok. I'm at Beautifully Bookish Bethany so it's pretty easy to find but I'm pretty proud of this. I like how it came together. <laughs> Last question, who are your favorite book community members? There are so many really wonderful people in this community and it is always, I'm realizing, I'm like, what happened to my camera angle? Okay, well, let's fix this, sorry. That's better. It's when I changed the battery, it like changed everything, sorry, okay. <laughs> favorite book community members. Um, okay, there are so many people that I really love in the book community, but I'm gonna narrow it down a bit. One person that I've gotten to know in the last year and really love, appreciate her as a person, as a content creator, is Jess from Jess Owens. She does the book community posts that keeps us all abreast of what is happening in the book community on Twitter, and I just really value what she brings to the community with that and the way that she tries to be as balanced and nuanced as possible while presenting things and kind of keeping us up to date because I can't follow all of it. It's just, it's a lot going on. She's also just a really wonderful person and I'm happy to have gotten to know her. And then I also want to just shout out all of the people that I do book clubs and read-alongs with. They are all people who I consider to be friends and really love and appreciate and think you all should go check out. Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter is a Indigenous Lakota booktuber and I do the Indigenous Romance read-along with her. We co-host it. She's wonderful. She's a mother. She's into Marvel. She's into books. She talks a lot about Indigenous books as well and deserves more love. All these people are going to be linked down below. Ashley from Bookish Realm is wonderful. I love her content. I love her as a person. She's another mom, booktuber, single mom. I don't know how she does it. She's a librarian as her day job and is just incredible. And we've been doing read-alongs together this year, which has been a lot of fun. So first we read The Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamora Pierce. And then this month we're starting the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. So that's just been really cool. And then lastly, some of my booktube besties from the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. We've been friends for several years now. We also now play D&D together and I just really love and value the friendships that I have with these ladies. Um, so we have Amanda from The Naughty Librarian, Mara from Books Like Whoa, and Leanna from Leanna's Library. You guys all mean a lot to me. So um, yeah, those are some of my favorite people in the book community, people that I love. So check them out down below if you aren't already. And hopefully this was fun. It was nice to look back and think about, okay, like what are some of the highlights and lowlights of the year so far? How are things going? Where are we headed? Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, um, tell me about either your favorite book that you've read so far in 2021 or a disappointment that you read in 2021 or both. Let me know in the comments down below how your reading has been going. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel and feel so inclined, you can check out the Patreon link down below or check out channel memberships. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.